Well, he's got that hammer down and that 47 hound. It's that bus grease monkey on the road. He travels all around and he's coming to your town. Get that bus grease monkey down the road. Today was a, uh, got a lot done today. Pretty good day. The, uh, as you're going to go through and see, we had definitely had a few Hey Lance moments on some stuff. So just had to order some extra parts in. We got everything in mostly that we needed. Uh, they didn't give us the right fluid. We ordered uh, synthetic and they gave us non-synthetic. I like to use synthetic in the wheels. Uh, 8590 is what it calls for, but 8090 would be fine. Um, a couple things. Milestone today, we hit 80,000 subscribers. So thank you for subscribing to the channel. We definitely appreciate that. That's an awesome milestone to hit. And uh, just going through doing this routine maintenance on this Bluebird Wonder Lodge. I think you'll enjoy the video from today because there was a few uh, can't believe that's like that moments. And it uh, should be pretty entertaining for you. Thank you. Okay, I'm under the Wander Lodge here. Let's see if I can right go. Okay, so this is the differential, and I'm on the rear side of it here. That would be the forward side. There is where the air dryer is located. Um, I was wondering where the air tanks were on this because I couldn't see them, but they're up above the differential. They're up there. They do have pull chain drains on them with no real chain. So I was able to, we aired them up a little bit and I pulled them and nothing, not a single drop of moisture or anything came out. Air does come out, so they're not plugged up. Um, so if you can see them. Ugh, sorry, scooch under here a little bit more. Yeah, so you can see that one's got a pull chain and then so does that one. Uh, and then there's the air dryer. That's on the, the forward side. So the front of the bus side of the differential. And then here's the differential, which we just checked. The fluid is nice, it's full, and it's nice and clean, looks good. Came around the back side here, and on the top of the slack adjuster, so just to show you where we're at here, there is a, uh, a grease fitting on the top that we greased up, and then grease was creaking out everywhere. And same thing on the other side, the matching one, you can see up in there, uh, his brakes ton of brake shoe left on there still. Inside of the drum, has got normal kind of heat checking on there. Same thing on this side. Probably making you sick watching this, but a ton, real nice thickness left there. Uh, greasing up the U joint here. Got grease coming out. That's good. Gonna continue to go down and do the slack adjusters on the tag axle. And there's supposed to be another grease fitting on the tag axle somewhere. Looks like it's maybe right there on the side of the S cam. And another one on that side, and then two more on the, the U joint there, and then the slip yoke on the drive shaft there. So we'll just continue to move along, scooching under the bus. Uh, remember to have it blocked, especially if you got the airbags up. Our airbags are all the way down, so it can't come down. So there's the one fitting there and one fitting there on the S cams. This would be in the tag axle of the Wonder Lodge. There's two more fittings here on the S cam. If you see it up there where I've cleaned it. Um, that's on the tag, so I'm those two there, and then there's two more that I'm going to show you on the drive axle in a second after I referred to the chart. I couldn't see it because they're hidden up top, but I figured there was more. Grease gun on it. So this is the drive axle, and if you follow that, the brake cam over, it's right there. You can't, you can't see it uh, from the position you're normally in on the underside. Now you can see where it's at. It was kind of hidden. There's one on each side for that on the drive axle. S cam. Here's the lubrication chart that we referred to. So that was the one that was hard to find up there. That's the slack adjuster that was easy to get. I checked the rear end, it's good. Uh, U joint, slip yoke, U joint, slack adjuster, and then. Uh, the two on the top there were for the um, S cams on there. So we've got every single one of those is done. 
we're going to service the hubs on the tags and on the steer tires. It recommends once a year on those. Um, see if I can find number four. Yeah, once a year. Check them every thousand miles. Um, that's pretty excessive. Change the lubricant when the seals are replaced or when the brakes are relined. Yeah, we don't need to change it. So we're just checking the fluid levels, which is telling you to check. Oh, check it every thousand miles. I thought it was service at it. I'm like, that's crazy. But it's a nice chart. I'll just pause it on here if you need to zoom in on it. Not exactly a scale. <laughs> so the tag looks good here. They don't make it where they just give you a drain. Sometimes they give you a drain in there. These don't have that. You actually gotta take everything apart to do it. But the oil is nice and clean inside. I went down to the very bottom, rubbed the edge. There's, there's no sediment or anything. Smells good. These top hat covers, this just pops on. If you got to remove the whole thing, it's got to do every other lug nut holds it on, but you can just pop it off to check it. So I, I don't like that they're on there because it's hiding. You know, if this had leaked out all its oil on the backside, you'd be driving on the road, you have no idea, but I guess that's why it says check it every thousand miles as part of your maintenance. Okay, so I'm checking the, the front wheel bearing here. So if I stick my finger in there and then I rub the bottom of it, pull my finger out, I can see that the oil is still clear, but you see all that dark sediment? Watch this as I wipe my finger on here. See that metal? That's all flakes of metal in there from the bearings. I don't know if it's coming out on the camera, but it's all shiny. It should be coming out good, right? That is not good. So we got a wheel bearing issue over here to address. That's why you want to stick your finger in there and rub the bottom, not just because if I just stick it in the oil, the oil looks pretty good. But if you go down and you rub the housing, that's when you get all that dark metal. This is on the other side. Same metal flick. This is my first finger out of the same hole here. That's not from the other side, that's from this side as well. So we're gonna have to pull these apart and see what's going on in there. It's out. It's in. Apparently you can't lock it in. Okay. Oh, that switch doesn't throw it out, leave it out. Well, I wonder what happens if you pull up somewhere that has a high curb where it doesn't have clearance to come out. You should have a way to manually override it from you doing should. that. And, and maybe there is a switch in addition to that yeah. that I'm not aware of. And it's, and it's air driven. Yeah. So I don't think it's necessarily going to break. Well, it might, but it's, uh, it's air driven. Going up. I don't know how much pressure it takes. Uh, what does that little compressor get it up to? That's what I could read. Cool. I don't see. I just need it aired up enough to get the tires off.
Holy cow. You know, it won't even go the other way. That's, that's got to be your brakes catching on it. That can't just be wheel bearing. <laughs> Could that be a slack adjuster issue? We're gonna we're gonna have it all part in a little yeah, bit. We'll, we'll find out. We'll have all of our questions answered. Right, and and we haven't lubed this any of that uh, stuff up here yet either. So. Very loud. I don't really feel wiggle in it. Can you see back in there how much metal? I mean, it's thick. So as I spin this slow, it, it catches and stops. Look at it even spun backwards, that's how much it's catching. It's just those bearings are gonna look so ugly. Catches. <laughs> it's not supposed to spring backwards. Extremely loose, <laughs> which obviously these are so tiny compared to most of the buses I work on. But the camera's doing it justice. It's like sandpaper. I don't have very good lighting on there. I shouldn't have wiped it with that rag, but... <laughs> Look at the race. Uh, destroyed.
So here's the inner race. Other than the, obviously the metal that's in there, it needs to be replaced, but uh, it's not at all like the, the inner one or the outer one was. And the bearing is way better. It's, it's just got damage from all the metal going through it. It's going to be replaced anyways, but this, this isn't the one that disintegrated. So I can drive this race out of there with one of my seal installers is exactly the right size. Yeah, this one's spinning. The brakes are, are good here. We're on the driver's side here of the bus, which is the left side. And the studs are all marked L, which means they're left-hand thread. So righty tighty lefty Lucy does not apply to this side. Um, one thing, uh, the DeWalt 12 volt or 24 volt will remove the lug nuts, uh, especially if you have an inch and a half socket on it. If you use an adapter, you're going up to something else. When you use an adapter, you lose power on it. but. Lots of sparklies. Finger loose. Look at the rag on there. Maybe too tight, we'll see. Just a couple little nasty goobers. We're obviously replacing them, but this looks nothing nearly as bad as the other side, so we'll see how the inner bearing looks. Explain that. Yeah. Well, the race the race is destroyed. It's completely coming apart. The bearing must have been so tight. You can see the ridge in that race where it's been rubbing and where it's not supposed to be rubbing. You see it in the back? It looks yep. like a collar. That's not supposed to be there. But what about that huge crater? It's, it's just the pitting that came through because it destroyed the, the hardened finish on the surface. There's another one on the top. bit of a wheel seal leak over here nothing's on the brakes which is good um, so we'll get this cleaned up over here replacing the seal Not really, there's no lip on there so that's good okay got it pretty well cleaned up there got all the metal flake left over So here's the race. This is the race out of the driver's side. I mean, you can see the clear lip right here on this, where it's shiny there. That's what the whole thing used to be. And that's how much it's worn into there. And then obviously where the hardening just disintegrated. Kind of looks like the a Sasquatch in there, don't it? Is it just me? <laughs> Looks like, it's looks like a dude's head up there at the top. And it's made actually, it looks sort of like that. Yeah, here's the other race, which still has some deep hitting. The hardened surface on it is, there you go, gone. 
it's actually in surprisingly good condition compared to how much for how much metal was going through there and how the other one looked but obviously it was it's damaged as well So it's not pretty either, but it's not as bad as the race was. You can definitely see some big chunks missing. We've seen worse. We've seen worse in the last few months, but yeah, they're definitely there. We got, we're cleaning these out, just trying to flush them. We, we don't want any of those metal particles left inside of here. So we don't want to have a glitter bomb in there. So we're just cleaning everything as good as we can. Can't have it too clean. Okay, getting things cleaned up pretty good here. Upper kingpin grease fitting, lower kingpin, tie rod end. This is on the front. Um, S cam and slack adjuster over there. So that was what five on that side. Okay. So this side has the same five, so the upper and lower kingpin, the tie rod end, uh, the S-cam and the slack adjuster, plus there's one more on the uh, steering knuckle there. And then I'm gonna guess that there's more up there. Uh, I'm gonna have to get to that later. Uh, but that's, so there's six on this side and five on the other. So we got our new bearings and races in, so the set 413 is the inner. These are all made in USA. These are NTN uh, Bauer bearings. Uh, both the cone and the cup are made in the US. Um, I already touched it there. And same thing with the inners, which these are the 406 is the number um, for the, this particular Wander Lodge. That's the, the set is the, um, the bearing and the cone. Um, and then we got a Scott Seal for one, and the National, they only had one National in stock for the other. They're, they're, based, they're the same number. Should be the same number. I'll have to look at them. Oh. Okay. Same thing, just different brands. I've used Scott Seals before. So it's actually on my bus. Um, this is the first bearing that I took out. You can see it cleaned up here now. And then the race that went along with it. It's bad, but it doesn't look nearly as bad as the other did. The inner race looked pretty good. Just obviously scuffed up and surface scoring and the, all that metal mashing in between the bearings. And then uh, He's going to get synthetic. I don't think that's synthetic. Well, that was fun, wasn't it? Uh, we're going to put everything back together tomorrow and take it for a test drive. We have all the parts we went to go get. We didn't get the gaskets for the Stemco 
covers. So he was going to go back in the morning and get the two gaskets for the Stemco covers and then get the right. He asked for synthetic, but they gave him it wasn't synthetic. So we're going to make sure we put synthetic back in there. Uh, other than that, um, just a shocking, you know, just going to do some routine, light routine maintenance and then find out that the bearings are completely destroyed. I went for a test drive in that bus. I didn't hear any growl or any noise up front that you would have thought you would have heard uh, that would have told me that. But that's why, you know, you saw when I stuck my finger in all those holes and then I, I scrape it along the outside rim because everything settles to the outside of those. Uh, and that's just a good sign that there's wear in there uh, to do that. So uh, definitely needed to be done really, really bad. Uh, the races that were in there, they weren't all, um, uh, I forgot the brand name. Um, now I'm drawing a total blank, but they weren't the same brand. The, the inner race and the outer race were different brands. So I'm going to assume that they have been changed, that that's not factory because the factory would have probably had the, the same ones in there. So they, both those front hubs have been serviced at some point. And my guess is that the preload wasn't set correctly when they did it last time. Um, just a stab in the dark, but uh, by how much wear and uh, the tightness of the bearings already with that much missing, they, they should have really been loose, especially the one on the dry, uh, which the one on the passenger side was loose, but the one on the driver's side was not loose uh, and it really should have been. So unless somebody would have just tightened it, I'm guessing they were over tightened, uh, but who, who knows? Uh, it's just a you know, total guess on that, but it was definitely really bad, needed to be changed seriously. And uh, the slack adjuster on that front right was also too tight. Uh, and those are um, self-adjusting slack adjusters, so uh, I gotta have to, you know, we greased everything up and we'll look at it, but that wheel was barely spinning. That would cause, uh, you know, a lot of heat going down the road with that brake uh, dragging in there like that. Uh, so we're gonna keep an eye on that as well. But uh, everything else that we got into today looked good, but it was definitely, a, oh man, this is a whole nother day of maintenance on stuff that was just supposed to be a real quick, you know, change the lube and, and inspect the tightness, preload and all that, but... Uh, didn't turn out that way today. <laughs>